uh, we did Under the Skin uh, on, on, on the show once, and I finally read it. I said on the show once, in fact, that I was reading it, and now fucking, whatever it is, two years later, I finally did read it. Um, <laughs> And it's really good. It's 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 different, but uh, and, but it ends at just the right fucking time. Like it, it's like at a point where the story could go on forever, yeah. essentially, and be just more miserable and more fucking sad. It just stopped, and I was like, "What the fuck? This is great." How does it finally compare to somebody the film? knows? Huh? How does, uh, it how does it compare? Uh, favorably, definitely. Uh, the film is is very different in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, it takes sort of the general concept of the character and her place in it and a few of the sort of general uh, surroundings like the Scot- picking people up in Scotland yeah. concept is still there and the kind of doing something with those people in a weird sci-fi-y kind of way that, yeah. that carries over but the way that the, what they do is totally different and the message it builds is a totally okay. it's, it's, it's not left open for interpretation in the book, uh, it, and and it's also a totally different thing. So like it's it's pointedly about something that's not what the film's about. Um, uh, the film draws on a lot of things like sexuality and and, uh, and 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 sort of ideas about sort of I don't know I can't remember it's been ages but you know like there's there's definitely something about sex and, and gender in there and uh, yeah. you can do all that kind of fucking reading from it. Um, this has nothing to do with that almost you know like it's 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 far more about like mankind as a species and what the fuck we weigh ourselves up as and it's it's equally interesting in a totally different way which and also it's it's a fucking very light book so you burn through it <laughs> i could go on and on have uh, you like have this. you seen the film Eddie? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think i have no uh, i think it's one that you'd enjoy yeah, yeah absolutely if you if you like sort of mild horror but also sci-fi, sci-fi. and thought oh, yeah, that's that's stuff. it's a very abstract film it's fun mm-hmm. yeah it's it really is and we had a fucking ball talking about it. Yeah. Uh, we had um, Carrie Lynn on that episode, I believe. And did, did we have Jason as well? No. Or, no, just Carrie Lynn? Yeah, but she fucking really brought it. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> uh, the only other thing, I mean, I could go on for days and days because I'm like, i I'm, I'm stuck on a couple of books that I'm reading, which are boring uh, and, and slow. Uh, so I'll, 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 Oh, which ones, man? Uh, fucking uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Okay. Is one of the oldest Chinese books, in, and it's uh, and it's like an episodic retelling of the historical battles between all these different clans in China. It's kind of good in that by reading it, you can see like where shows like Dragon Ball Z come from, uh, in that you know that sort oh. of very episodic like cliffhanger nature uh, and the sort of battles that all sort of mean something. Maybe more, and if you've ever played Dynasty Warrior games. Yep. Uh, that's what it is. That's that's what Dynasty Warriors is. Right. <laughs> like it's it's just a game version of this this novel or sort of series of stories. Uh, it just it goes on and on and on though. <laughs> like it never seems to end. Uh, and what, you kind of get the point of like why you should be reading it about a you know sort of ten to fifteen percent of the way through. It just does that forever from that point onwards. It it would be good to see adapted a lot of times though. Uh, there's lots of really good parts in it. Uh, and it's kind of it's amazing to see if you can go back I think it's literally almost a thousand years this was like compiled um, and that storytelling really like in terms of like episodic storytelling has really not shifted that much um, they've really just kept like it's it's violent and politically minded and it's about a bunch of people upending each other's lives one after the other and there's so many beheadings and it's you know it, on paper it sounds <laughs> fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you actually read it, it's a bit of a chore. So, like, uh, the other one, I've almost finished uh, Around the World in 80 Days, uh, which is fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's was fine. that another one that was on this 1001? Yeah, th- these are all on uh, this like, fucking... This, yeah. like, I'm, that's, this is why it's... That's why I'm bothering, you know? Like, And that's why I'm going to stick through the ones that I'm like, eh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, 80 Days is fine. I even read the fucking two Alice in Wonderland books. And, and, and uh, I mean, I I just didn't like them. Just not even like I don't think they were bad. I just didn't like them. You know, like I think that uh, they're they're well written. And I think I would as a, if I had been read them as a kid, I would have loved them because they're very creatively fulfilling. They they, yeah. they they really draw on that that abstract part of the human mind that just wants to go places that just endlessly. Um, uh, but as an adult reading it, it's 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 kind of laborious, <laughs> and uh, and even it, and that whole, maybe it doesn't have a meaning, maybe it does, sort of nature to books, 
and like drawing attention to that as it does so often. I, I kind of like, oh, you kind of can't really have it both ways, man. You know, like just just write something about something or don't. You know, fucking yeah. don't like oh, but you know, not all things have to have meaning. Like shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh, yeah, but that's that's how I've been spending my nights. Sadly, Fair enough. Is is being a bookworm. Uh, and if you want to do to, to die fulfilled, apparently there's only a. <laughs> 950 odd books to go <laughs> but yeah that's me yeah I don't think I'd have the patience to go through a, like a book like that doing like all 1001 like, yeah. I, I could do films probably maybe probably not I, did, I was talking to somebody about this last night and they said when you get the film version give me a call <laughs> you know, like when I get the fucking film version of this 1001 I'm like eh, okay but I don't want to watch 1001 films <laughs> yeah I want to read. You know, that's that's an actual challenge. Watching one thousand and one films, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I watched. I've already watched like two hundred in my life, and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I really struggle with with that kind of thing is when you're working through like a list like that, and you're watching things because you feel like you should, or like reading things because mm. you feel like you should, as opposed to because you actually want to. Yeah. And I get that. Like that, you, there should be a balance because sometimes you can like have these really nice surprises or it will like broaden your sort of horizons and you, you know mm-hmm. th- there's a danger of being stuck in like an echo chamber of just doing what you like over and over again yeah exactly but it's, uh, yeah it's and that's that why this balance. is the, yeah it, it gives the good opportunity to be like okay this is what other smart people supposedly think are good and there's a lot to choose from so we have an option here to really expand and, and grow and i mean it like i said with wild swans like it is Somewhere in there, you might find something that is genuinely life changing or changes the way you think about things. The, um, but uh, I do have a, a separate rule when going through this, which is, if I get sort of halfway through a book and I literally can't go any further, I'm still gonna fucking count it, and then I, I'm gonna count that I've read it, and then I'm gonna okay. stop. So Bet. like, Great Expectations, for example, to pick one off the fucking list, uh, is a book that I have tried to read four times, and I've gotten up to about 60% through it. Yeah. Uh, and then I leave it for a while because I'm so angry. And then I come back to it like two months later. I have now realized I don't remember anything of the last 20%. Yeah. And then I fucking start reading it again. And I, I get angry again. I get to that point again. And then I stop. And then, then the cycle repeats. So I've just... I've I've had it great expectations. It's over. I'm not <laughs> going to read you. I'm never going to finish you. Fuck you. I'm going to watch some <laughs> shit film version. It's going to be crap because the story itself is crap. And then I'm going to fucking stop. <laughs> but yeah. So like, if, if you do ever do something like that and you get yourself locked into that position i i think rules sort of outs like that are important yeah because at the end of the day once you feel like you're not getting anything more from something you really have to ask yourself why are you still doing it and in cases like great expectations where you get the point of the story and you've got it for a very long time now it's like to find that it goes on for another twice as much as you already like another exact amount that again is insane and to go through that like, I feel the same about Moby Dick. I have, I've tried. I'm about 40% through Moby Dick. And I, I, I'm pretty sure there's there's got to be no more ways to describe seafaring and whale hunting. <laughs> there's, but apparently he has 60% more book to go. <laughs> like, what the fuck happens that makes this so interesting? It's not been interesting for fucking ages. <laughs> um, and so I don't know. I might keep reading Moby Dick. But at the same time, I've counted it on the list because I do feel like I, I could stop reading here and if I ever had a conversation with somebody I could bluff the rest yeah. and yeah. Uh, get away with it you know so yeah I think there there is a there is in these challenges a great reason to have an out <laughs> yeah so yeah Lee you should have given up with American Psycho don't pretend no you forced me to read that fucking book Lee <laughs> <laughs> yeah I did and you know it was worth it for the podcast right uh sure yeah. I'd also like to point out, Liam, your mild hypocrisy in trying to sort of talk about how, oh, working your way through a list of books and how, oh, you know, you've got to do it sometimes because you can find these surprises. And the hypocrisy is that you're currently reading Goosebumps. Don't pretend like you're on par with Lee, who is reading a thousand and one books <laughs> that, like, people are like, these are so meaningful, and you're doing Goosebumps. Yeah. Hey. hey. That, that, that's an episodic horror series. Hasn't he earned, hasn't he earned Goosebumps, civilization. though? I don't think he has. <laughs> I think I have, definitely. The, the thing is, like, what I'm finding with Goosebumps and Point Heart is it's getting me excited about reading again. 
which is yeah. more important. Yeah. The fact that you're actually reading other stuff, have started reading other stuff as well as that, is a good thing. Yeah, although I, I've started to struggle with that now, but we'll, oh, we'll cover sake. that in a future one. It's just, it's got boring. But anyway, okay. 